that house. So, cheers to episode 49. Cheers. I don't I don't have a single drink to cheers. And I won't. Uh, I was drinking coffee in that a little mo- you know, a little morning coffee. Evan, how do you how do you take your coffee? Straight black, nothing in it. <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> Almost said something bad. <laughs> I put a little milk in mine this morning. Ew, oh. dude. I wonder if the I wonder don't if the, say stuff like that. I wonder if the squatters in our living room help them to self to a cup because there's a lot out there. Uh, today is Sunday, December fifth, two thousand twenty one, uh, at nine fifty three in the morning. A little remote worst <laughs> podcast of all time. A little morning show to start off your week, and Michigan, like Evan said. Dusted Iowa. He said this would never be a game, and it wasn't. And it happened, and Michigan's in the playoff. Uh, well, I guess we'll have to see what the rankings are later, but they did it. I feel great about it, despite how I look right now and how my head tells me I feel right now. How is everyone? How was everyone's week? Why don't I, mean, I, I guess I'll go first. I'll go, yeah, oh. Evan. You, I, I'm trying to be better at that as a host. I need to actually say someone's name. How was your week? So, Evan, how was your week? Uh, let's see. Last time we talked Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, I helped a uh, friend of the podcast um, do a mock trial, and I was like the fake witness of this mock trial. What, um, what are you talking about? Luke had a mock trial for his class. He's like in, a like, fake law. court case. Yes, and I had to be a fake witness to this like mock trial, and I had to go up in and they had to question me. That's awesome. Um, and then after that, I uh, jogged to the Brunson Center um, and watched Michigan State beat Louisville. That was good. Um, other than that, I didn't do a darn thing. Went to a basketball game yesterday, fully submerged myself in college football. Mm, nice. Um, I'm busy this afternoon, but, I mean, that's not important. How about that Baylor Oklahoma State game? Not to derail us, but that was unbelievable. I just, I just love Sean McDonough, and I hope people <laughs> around America just like appreciate that he's one of the greatest announcers of all time. I praise for the man. I like Sean McDonough a lot, but I definitely get confused sometimes how much you just <clears throat> absolutely love him. Like I don't think I've ever said how much I love him as much, nearly as I, much as Evan does. I've never just woke up and was like. <sighs> God, I love Sean McDonald. I, on God, I watched that last play of like when they were short, like getting into the end zone. He solid like fifteen times last night, just laying in bed. It, he popped up on my feed, and I just replayed it over and over and over again just to listen to Sean McDonough's call on it. Uh, there was some mayhem in the house when that happened. What what was his call? You don't have to reenact it in full, but what did he say? He said for like a chance at like a Big Twelve championship, and for a chance for a CFP, and his like voice cracked. He didn't say college football playoff. He said CFP, mm-hmm. and then he's like he's running towards like the end zone, and he's like screamed that he did not get there. Um, his voice cracked a little bit, full of emotion. He wanted so bad. I feel like deep down he wanted so bad just to say um, any scores to like make the playoff, but he was short, so he just had to like uh, JT wasn't. Okay, that just feels terrible. It doesn't matter because those demons are gone. Yeah, they're over it. Um, my week, I didn't, this week I just remember Monday and Tuesday, mainly Monday, was just like the most drunk sports news of all time. Uh, I like worked throughout the week, which relates to stuff like that. And I just remember how swamped and busy it was because you had MLB free agency because they're trying to get done before the lockout. You had every coach at a major program, basically leaving their program for another major program. And then you had all the typical like injury news in the NFL that happens that Monday. Like we had Dalvin Cook, we had Christian McCaffrey. Like we just have every single big player that matters, Alvin Kamara, like working through injuries. And it's just been a swamp of news. And then back half of the week, I don't know, I kind of flew by. I didn't really, nothing was crazy. And then we got to the weekend and I'm sure Alex might touch on that a little bit more based on the state of his body right now. Uh, Alex, how are you checking in from your bedroom right now? I feel like shit. <laughs> um, so, went to this week. I didn't do much. I went to the mall one day. So Sweet. it's nothing to talk about. Um, What'd you so get? So last, I 
I just went with Mackenzie. Wow, first name drop too. Wow, you're, name drop. You are, you are reckless today. You're reckless. <laughs> um anyways. Went to uh well watched college football yesterday, you know, all day. Went to beat ups, had a decent time there, and then shit hit the fan. And went to uh what are the, we calling it? The JP JP B B. JP B B. Went there. Um you know, I thought I was having a good time until the last four rounds of shots. Shots, shot, 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 And um, needless to say, right now, everybody, I'm absolutely battling. I mean, I think I don't want to get into it, but you know, just know that I am doing my best. It could be much worse. Hashtag. If I get up and puke during the show, you won't be surprised. <laughs> Hashtag still drunk. <sighs> Potentially. Some are saying you're washed. Some are saying that I'm not going to drink for a good two years after this. <laughs> so I have a confession about last night like I, that I'd like to drop on you guys. Is everyone ready for oh, this? Yeah. I don't want to talk about alcohol. Um. Drop it. The last time we went to the JPBB, which is the Jelly Pumpkin Basement Bar, for those that know, we did this thing where, like, one guy goes to the bar because it's a little crowded bar. It's hard to move around. You didn't buy a drink, did you? I didn't even have the chance to buy a single drink last night because I just kept getting them shoved in my hands. It was Mm -hmm. unbelievable. I I can't talk about alcohol. It's going to make me puke. And I felt so bad. Sometimes, I'll say this, there was three drinks last night, a beer, and then... No, two. A beer and then an actual mixed drink. I just simply didn't drink. I simply just put on the counter because I couldn't not hold them. I didn't have room in my arms to hold the drinks. I was three drinks deep at a time holding them. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? I just put down a Miller Lite. I'm like, I'm not drinking that. I, I can't. I don't I have... I blame you for not drinking Miller Lite. <laughs> yeah, that was also Miller part Lite of it. Miller Lite stinks. But I felt bad. I'll owe it to the guys that I went with at some point. I'll buy the next first round. I took all the shots that were given to me, but like I simply couldn't hold on to all the drinks. It was impossible. Let's talk about sports. It was also, first of all, one of those weird deja vus where the last time we went to this place, it was like the same DJ and he played the same track list with all the same transitions and he was doing it again. It was still good music, but I was like, I've heard this exact transition before from like this song, like from like no hands to like a big Sean song. I've heard it all. I just realized I didn't order an Uber last night. I ordered Uber Eats. <laughs> so I you, canceled it. So you ordered food from a restaurant in Detroit. My attempt was to get us an Uber, and I ended up ordering food. That nice. I didn't get maybe in the summer. <clears throat> maybe in the summertime, I can tell. Evan's the best storyteller on the podcast by far. But in the summer, when it's less busy, I can tell my story in New York where I ordered Ubers to the wrong address twice after a night out. And it was just like in an Uber for 45 minutes to an hour, just circling like, and then what happened when you got out of the Uber? Well, that you'll hear that in the story. Great tease. Alex, great tease. Um, so we will hop into football. Like Alex wants to talk about the first recap we have is Michigan versus Iowa, Michigan. The final score is jarring. Honestly, when you look at it, 42 to three, I can safely say I was so dialed in for the first half of this game, and then we made the move because beat ups here closes at 11 p.m., which was also a stunning part of last night. So we made the move to the JPBB, and they had like two TVs, shout out them, and watched it there, but it wasn't great angles. And as our as the, the theme of the night was just I needed Michigan. Once they got to 21-3, I knew deep down this game was over. Um, but Evan, you felt like from your vantage point, this game was over much earlier than that. Is that fair to say? It was over right after Iowa threw the fake running back toss, and they did not score on that. Yeah. Like, they're not going to get that many chances to score um, down in the red zone, and then you miss the touchdown throw wide open. Fullback was unathletic on the play. And then you come around, and you miss the easy chip shot field goal. And at that, at that time, like you had Michigan on your heels, you're the underdog, you put points up, you force them to a three and out, maybe something happens. Like it's maybe it's a different outcome in the first half. But as soon as that happens, it's like, okay, come on. Yeah. Yeah, they they definitely did Iowa things, and you realize why they have three losses 
on the year and why they had to get help to get into this game. I'm looking through the box score. Did anyone else see like how a, it just seems weird that Michigan scored 42 points in this game based on what I'm seeing in the box score? You have the starting quarterback, Cade McNamara, under 200 yards, 16 for 24. And if you look at Hassan Haskins' rushing stats, 17 for 56, 3.3 yards per carry. So Iowa did their classic thing where they, they hold less than four yards of carry. Now you look at Blake Corum. He only had five runs, but 74 yards with that long touchdown, which was the whole was basically his whole rushing stats. I did think Iowa's defense, as crooked of a number they gave up, like looked stout for parts of this game. And that's why I was nervous because Michigan kept letting them hang in it. Like I knew, I think I kept saying at the at beat ups that it was 14 to three. I was getting the ball at the half. If they score 14 to 10, then this this game gets super nerve wracking. But as we saw, I, I guess I know that the, the MVP of the game was just Michigan's defense. And I guess that also goes into Iowa's lack of offensive ability. Is that because like am I am I right on the box score thing? Like those aren't great stats. The game sucked. No, it was well. I mean, the first half it was two plays that defined the entire first half. Hundred percent. It was Blake Horam's run, and then it was <laughs> who knew Donovan Edwards has the absolute cannon. And um, not even he, just he, he an saying that was the greatest throw by a running back of all time. I wasn't saying it, but well, someone tweeted us. One guy, one guy commented on our tweet and said. I don't even think he was joking. He said Donovan Edwards threw the greatest running back pass of all time. But honestly, the the spiral was so tight that I'd have to see another one that proves it wrong. Sorry, I've not caught you off there. But yeah, I just want the spiral was also super tight on the ball when they showed the replay. It was crazy. As soon as the play happened on my TV screen, I started screaming. It's a double pass because it was a lateral, and I am screaming at Iowa like hey, it's a double pass and. And he, he eats it down the field, and he's just standing there by himself. He could have walked into the end zone. Nobody would have caught him. Dude, um, the Iowa defense did not hear you yelling. Also, I don't I Alex, understand I don't, that. <laughs> Alex, I'm not sure if you remember this, but you looked at me and told me that the I moment— I knew it. Alex told I me— I was the only person that knew it in the bar, <laughs> that that was a pass. Alex told it's me true. the moment the ball was snapped, it's a double pass. That's what he claims he thought. And I go, that's not possible. You knew it once they threw it to Donovan Edwards. I saw the formation and knew the trick play was coming. That's not true at all. Shout out me for the huge football brain. I knew it was coming. That's 100% not true, but I like that narrative that you were that dialed in. Just the fact, though, that for like Harbaugh and Gaddis to call that play after like Iowa kind of ran like a, a similar type of play. Like, you know what? You try to run against us. We're just going to turn around and run it against you guys. Like, see what what's up. Um, it's a pretty gutsy call. Yeah, I'll say it was pretty sweet. I enjoyed it. And... To go on the trick play theme, lost in the shuffle. They ran a flea flicker late in the fourth quarter to score again. They didn't score on it, but they hit a big shot on a flea flicker. Yeah, up the up the sideline, a little wheel route. It's like kind of like the same concept they ran against uh, Ohio State. Hundred like percent. Yeah. The different guy was like running the wheel route, clear guy out with a post, and had somebody come up behind him something on the about, sideline. Something about the flea flicker wheel, wheel route, is sweet. Now I was. Like, the about. first half was like boring. Because Iowa was winning the field position battle, and that's 100% what it was. Like the two plays Iowa, Michigan capitalized on, and then Iowa moved the ball to midfield, and then it was just a punt fest in the first half. Iowa just winning the field goal position or the field position. And I mean, he had seven punts total in the game, and five of them were down inside the 20. Probably three or four of them were down inside the 10. And one of them, well, you guys had a fair catch on the three yard line. It was just like a dummy yeah. mistake there. Yeah, the the rule is you just put you plant your feet on the five and you don't back up, and if you back up, you let it go. Uh, I kept saying to Alex, "This is a point of contention." I kept saying, "This is Kirk Ferentz's dream scenario of how to play football." Um, it's Kirk Ferentz, dude. And Alex <laughs> said he was going to punch me if I pronounced the head coach's name wrong one more time, and I just kept pronouncing it wrong the whole night. I could tell Grant had a few beverages because he just he looks at me and goes. Kirk Ferentz. <laughs> I'm like, dude, it's not Ferentz. I said, this is bad, dude. This is Kirk Ferentz's like brand of football, and he's just so excited right now uh, how this was going. And then I said, then, I didn't mean to get his name wrong. I said, uh, Spencer Patras, and he goes, "What are you doing, man?" This is close enough. He played like he doesn't deserve his name getting pronounced right. So, oh. um, if I were to just happen to get up at any point in this podcast, just please continue on as normal. Okay, Just but if before don't that, don't worry about it. Mute yourself before you do it. 
Oh, I yeah. will. Thank Before you. Mute myself. Before that were to happen, hypothetically, if it were to happen, it's Alex, it's approaching. Alex <laughs> is decided that he didn't really care about this game, rightfully so. Uh, although we'll get this to this later. Oh no. I can still hear you. So, I was gonna, well, I was going to ask you about your. Um, you put on your scouting right. cap and you looked at. Let's Aiden. get to it. You, <laughs> he said, "I'm just going to watch Aiden Hutchinson every single snap and see if he'd be a good fit for the Lions." And I just like it to know. It stinks. Don't draft him. Okay, before we get there, like the fact that he won like the like the game MVP. Oh, did he really? I didn't. Even yeah, know I didn't see it until super late, and I was like, okay, maybe he did have like a sneaky good game. No, he did not. Yeah. You want to know his, his stats for the game? One, one, I see one sack. That's about it. He had one sack, four total tackles. That was four it. Four tackles. Do you think that raises a point? Do they like, for the MVP, are they consulting with PFF Live and like looking at pressures that people make on the quarterback? Because that is interesting. Because I saw a tweet that, that he had like a decent amount of pressures in the game, but I can't imagine that the committee. According to the box score, he had two QB hurries. Yeah, that's not that many. But so did Upshaw. Well, I guess not that it really matters, but I'm I am when I look back at the offensive stats, I'm not sure who I'm giving it to. You just give it to Donovan Edwards for that pass. And like in fairness, like there's nobody that really like stood out dramatically. Like maybe Haskins because he had two touchdowns. Yeah, and he did have 78 scrimmage yards. 20. Yeah. Dude, he really. So we'll get to it in the preview, which we'll get into a little bit more. We can start getting into it when. Uh, well, we can get into it and Alex will join us. Alex has stepped away for a moment, but I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. I, I have to look, go back and listen to the highlights or watch the highlights. I haven't, but from what it sounded like in the audio bar, the audio from the bar at B-Dubs wasn't cranked all the way up. It sounded super loud when I was on defense. So I'm going to imagine the Michigan crowd was like 85% of that stadium. So I imagine it was, it felt like almost more of a home game for them. So that probably helped. Yeah, there's definitely more Michigan fans, I would say. Um, it's just weird. Michigan like, obviously was Michigan was the fans were into it more because they get down. Iowa got down thirteen nothing, and took them out of it. And it just it's just weird because I don't know. Like, I know the I'm going to be super dialed in. I'm not going to let like I kind of got lost in the sauce of this game because we were I don't know up fourteen nothing, and then you could just physically tell Iowa had like. Didn't even have like those college football fluke plays in them to score. They they missed their one with that trick play, and it was like yeah. it just made me remind me how hyped the Ohio State game was and how that was like the Super Bowl because like this didn't even compare almost in like feeling afterwards. I did happy. It's, it's fun. I'm sure you guys felt it. It's just fun to scream playoffs after you like, you know you're gonna, like playoffs like playoffs. yes. It's fun to scream and like just joke about, but the actual hype of this game and like all the media content. Like I was just on my phone for hours at the Ohio state game, looking at any piece of content I could find. I don't think I'm going to do that for this one. Cause it was just like, I was so dead. I was just so terrible of an opponent. And it was just yeah, like, people were saying I was like the sixth best team in the big 10. Yeah. I, people, it, afterwards I was reading a bunch, pe- bunch of people were like up in arms still about like the big tens, uh, format for the playoff game. And yeah. a lot of people want them to go to like the big 12 model. Yeah, where it's just it's just the top two teams, Self- regardless of regardless of division. Selfishly, that would suck for <clears throat> this podcast in terms of playing because, yes, like you, if you conquered an Ohio State, you conquer a Michigan State, you conquer a Michigan, you're probably going to play that team again, and that's going to suck. Yeah, but yeah, I would, and the argument people always make about like SEC versus Big Ten, they like okay. They compare the SEC West, which is like the, in the best SEC division recently. I think it's fair to say that Iowa would not be a single team in the SEC West. I don't think they would. In the West, let me double check the just who's in there again. Like they I, could compete with Missouri. Oh, Missouri's in the East. Like it might be true. Uh, the West is Alabama. They ain't winning that. And Ole Miss. I, Ole Miss will hang forty two on them easily. Arkansas. Arkansas sneaky good. Depends on what Arkansas team. They can run the ball. Mississippi State. They oh, well, they throw the ball. They but, could beat Mississippi State, but it it's not a guaranteed. Miss, they could. Mississippi State does at least have a really good quarterback, so that will help them if they did yeah. play. Texas A&M. 
I like Texas A&M. Texas has more athletes. Depends on what Texas A&M team shows up. And then we saw what Auburn. Auburn's there. Like, that would be just like a Big Ten buffet. It would be like a 22-20 game if they played. And then the worst team in the West, which I still would love, I, I would take them 100 times at 100 against, Iowa, is LSU. It's LSU, yeah. Like, the West is stacked, and I think every single team in that Iowa division. Iowa wouldn't be a single team in that division. <laughs> Alex has rejoined us. Well, I can still hear everything that has gone on. <laughs> it's, just like, I, it's a puddle program. Yeah, they're not horrendous. a puddle program, dude. They average like ten wins a year. It just this it's is just their offense is from nineteen thirty five. Evan, I, 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 yes, they run the same offense. I get that, dude. They don't even want to score. They ran the ball on third down eight times. I don't yes. know if that's true, but it felt like eight times. Okay, it so did, like when they moved like the ball there in like the fourth quarter, it seemed like all of a sudden, like the offensive coordinator, Kirk Ferentz's son, just like found like the fifth and like sixth page of their playbook and was like holy cow we have these plays in here we don't have to run the same bootleg and we don't have to run like the same like outside zone or just like a basic trap play up the middle anymore so what do you play calling i've ever seen nobody loves a little tight end waggle bootleg like kirk ferentz and his staff dude <laughs> kirk ferentz dude stop it, saying like, that in like in iowa's defense like their quarterback play was so bad this game. I honestly think if like CJ Beathard or Nate Stanley is like the quarterback for them in this game, I, I think it's hundred percent way closer. The game should have been close. It's they also just, wild. Their <laughs> offense was so bad. Not that those guys are bad. Like CJ Beathard has had stretches in the NFL where he looked like, oh okay, but it's just like crazy that those are the names that like Iowa fans have to dive back into. That's like that's like the elite of their yeah. program. Like Jake Ricky Stancy, like Ricky Stancy scoring like. 20 points that game. CJ Beathard is getting Iowa to score 20 points that game. Also, Who did uh, we play? Nate Stanley? No, we Ooh. played CJ Beathard. Oh, wow. So, for if we're keeping track of the comparison rankings that will happen this this next month, Michigan State faced a tougher opponent, tougher Iowa team in the Big Ten Championship. 100% we did. And if no Michigan doubt, fans, 100%. If Michigan fans think something else, then you need to go recheck that Iowa team and then this Iowa team. That-, that Iowa team was undefeated and undisputed. The fourth team in the country. Hey, I'm oh. sorry to and stop this, team, this. This team backdoored into the West Division because PJ Flex said, hold this L, Wisconsin. We shouldn't be giving Iowa this much time because they were so bad. Right. I have a really important question. Okay. I have a question. Well, I hope it's not the same. I have a thought. Don't let me forget it. You go first. Though. No, you, this is not even related to our podcast. Oh. Um. Do you guys think I should start Mob Sony Michelle? Because it sounds like he's playing over Daryl Henderson, and he's not going to play. If Henderson's out, you should play. Well, I don't. Who's your other option? You didn't give us that. Uh, Miles Sanders. Ooh, Ooh that's tough. I don't. He's know. also Jalen Hurts he's is playing. playing. The, Sanders is playing the Jets, bro. Jalen Hurts is playing. playing the Jags, though. This is quite a predicament. Jags have a sneaky good defense. <clears throat> So no one answered my question. I can't believe I just said that out loud. But the Jags do have a sneaky good defense. Um, you know, my gut says to play Sony Michelle because they commit to run the ball, and Miles Sanders has been absolutely terrible this year, even when healthy. Evan, what do you think? Uh, I want to start at Trey Juan Smith. So well, I, I made just, that. I would have just that was a both. mistake. That was a mistake. <laughs> so. Uh, that was uh, okay. While well, Evan thinks about that, how, how mad were you guys this game watching Iowa's punt returner, knowing that he won the award over Jaden Reed? Well, it was a joke because that guy went backwards on every single punt. That's the kid that beat Jaden Reed out. That for is the correct. Big Ten I was returner of the year. <laughs> That's, no, yeah, well, that kid. That kid morning. won returner of the year. And I think he had negative 14 yards in the Big Ten Championship game. That's at least what Alex told me uh, in B-dubs. I didn't confirm, oh, it's confirmed. or look it up, but I was told that he is the returner of the year in the Big Ten over Jane Reed. Is there like... Which seems wrong after what I saw. No, it's correct. No, I mean, like, it seems like they made the wrong choice for the award. Punt, punt returns? Average punt return yards was 8.2. That doesn't seem that good. That's dog shit. I don't, shit. I don't even know if he scored a touchdown. Who am I to say? Well, Jaden Reed had two. 
This is why we need to redo the divisions so they don't award like kids from the West team that stink. Like Aiden O'Connell got second team All Big Ten over Peyton Thorne. Well, I, Aiden O'Connell's pretty sweet. He didn't throw an interception last four weeks. Um, All right, so Cade McNamara should have gotten third team over Peyton Thorne. I didn't bring him into the conversation. I'm simply backing I did. my guy Aiden O'Connell. Alex, you have to realize that like the media it's just about just like looks whatever at the team jersey. is good. Yes. Yeah, stupid. have you guys ever seen Cade's speech against Rutgers last year when he came in and won the game after Joe Millen got you pulled? You would think that <laughs> they, they um, voted off that. What if we went out like, huh? with all these the player awards? You would have thought Michigan State went six and six this year, just because they're just like all getting like honorable mention. You would have thought they were a bad team just because that Ohio State loss just like made everyone think they were six and six. Yeah, I mean it's definitely not like. Their head coach They're got big, their head coach definitely didn't get Big Ten Coach of the Year. Well, and that was the greatest coach coaching of the turnaround of all time. <laughs> no, I know, but I'm saying like they did. Actually, get... that happened in uh, the MAC this year. Well, Michael Lombardi. Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year was CJ Stroud. I have a gripe about it. What award did the Kansas just get? Running back of the year? He what did he get? Running back of the year, which yeah. is the easiest award of all time to win because the rest of the running backs suck. Huh. Whoa, just we're getting kidding. lost in the sauce. But they did get two big awards. I would like to pivot to not enough. A college football playoff preview, which it's good, but it's bad. I guess we have to cover it in multiple ways because we okay, don't. Last question. I'm oh, sorry. No, I just ahead. thought I forgot about it. While I was laying in bed last night, I said, I honestly think if Adrian Martinez is on Iowa, this game is 100% closer. They like, win. in the 20s. Yeah. I mean, it feels it's a slam dunk. Yeah. Cause like it was a Adrian 30... Martinez makes this team better. It was a 39 point blowout. It ended up, being, yeah, he 100% does. I don't know how tight, but. Well, I guess the way Michigan ran the ball, not great. It would have been much closer. The game didn't feel that tight, despite it, the score. It just it was did. like Iowa couldn't score points. Yeah, I would only say as a panicked Michigan fan, it didn't feel like good until 21-3. to And it was like, okay, they're not scoring. Well, I realized after uh, the terrible throw on the – well, the fullback falling down on their trick play, I was like, yeah, Iowa just can't score. They're not going to. And then they missed a field goal, and you're like, well, what a joke. What a joke of a program. Great at field position battles, though. Um, yeah, they won the. So now we move to the playoff, and I'll open this with a, a sincere question that Tipsy Grant was, like, joking, but also serious. Is Michigan going to be ranked the number one team in the country? No. Damn. No chance. I, I'm sorry, but this is based off of the committee letting Alabama hang around all year in the top four. They have an not, obsession not with Alabama. in the top four. They were in the top two the whole time. Was until Alabama this week? Was Alabama they four? Of us? Three. Okay, they were they moved, three. They were three. The lowest yes. they've been is three. Correct. Oh. And it just like the fact that they were in there the entire time, and then they're going to be like, all right, they beat Georgia. Alabama is going to be number one. Alabama being in the top four all year just allowed the committee to have a an easy out. Like, okay, Alabama loses Georgia, they're out. Alabama beats Georgia, they flip flop on one and three. Yeah, that sucks. That's a little depressing. I, if there was any way, I, I mean, it could it could be a Christmas miracle if we get to noon and they drop Michigan as one. I would, I'd, I'd poop. No, wow. Michigan should deserve to be in that conversation to have to be the number one seed. Um, but I just, I don't think the committee is like intelligent enough. I don't think those people in there like understand like the concept of college football throughout the entire year. And Shop. I just don't think they're going to give it to them. People always talk, though, about <clears throat> that they don't want to force a rematch. Is there any credence or belief that they may want to force a rematch? Because, like, the Georgia-Alabama games have always, like, usually classics. Like, do they just want them to play again and settle it there? Or no? But if they want a rematch, they want it in the championship game. So it's all eyes on the championship game. They want as most money as possible for each game. Yeah. And that feels right. It just sucks because, obviously, as a... Michigan fan, you were just praying for the scenario where you catch Cincinnati or Notre Dame or Oklahoma exactly. State. Exactly. If you get one of those teams and then you have a good chance to be in the national championship game and then they're – the committee's probably looking at it or people above them, whoever has the final say. It's like, okay, the ratings for the Cincinnati-Michigan game are probably high but not as high if like it's Michigan, Georgia, and Alabama-Cincinnati. God, poor Cincinnati. That's going to be disgusting. So let's hop into – We'll keep the previews brief because we don't 100% know who they're playing. The most likely scenario that we're Georgia. talking talking out loud here is Georgia. So let's dive into what we would think a Michigan-Georgia matchup would look like briefly. And then you guys can give – we can all give our just score predictions for 
if they played. Um, a Michigan Georgia matchup is Georgia is Iowa, but eighty thousand times uh, more competent. So I don't love the matchup for Michigan because Michigan tries to bully people. I don't know if they're going to be able to bully Georgia. Uh, elite front seven. So it would be surprising if they bullied them. I mean, if you rush for, I don't know what their rushing stats finished against Iowa, but what what they finish with, Grant, you know, off the top of your head? Um, sadly, college football reference does not add the team. Oh, yeah, they do. Do, 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 do. They had 34 carries for 211 yards and four touchdowns. It's way more than I expected. Um, however, <laughs> yeah, me I'll too, just keep honestly. motoring on. Um, if Michigan can't run the ball against Georgia, the problem is they don't have the skill players that Alabama does. So Alabama beat Georgia by crossing routes and spreading it out and having a Heisman quarterback throw all over them. Um, Michigan doesn't have that. So I think Georgia could, of all the matchups they could have gotten um, for the semifinal, this is the worst one. Interesting. Just because Georgia tries to do what Michigan does, and they have more talent than Michigan. You know, despite that, the great season Michigan's having. I think those are great points. And also, now that I think about it, we don't have to get into the nitty gritty score predictions because we're gonna. I keep forgetting that we have like a month basically until this game's played or a couple weeks, so we can just briefly touch on the three different matchups that could be potential, but. I agree. Like when you said Georgia is Iowa, you could also just, I've been, I told you guys like two weeks ago, like Georgia is just Michigan on steroids. They, like you said, they play the same brand of football. And historically, when I think about the playoff, I, I'm, when we talk about this podcast, I think about when Michigan State went up against Alabama. It's like Alabama was just Michigan State but on steroids. Like when you have a team that like is born on, bred on physicality and running the football, and then you run into an opponent who does the same thing, but they just have better talent overall. It's, it's bad because you can't – like your chance in the playoff against a good team like that is like if you get a good matchup. Like matchups make games. And like when Clemson was able to beat Alabama finally because they had a, a mobile quarterback that could like spread them out and make it tough on them. This is just like the Spider-Man meme pointing, but one team – one Spider-Man's like slightly bigger and more athletic. In that, <laughs> not slightly, like definitely more big and more athletic, and that's Georgia. So that's tough for Michigan. I'm sure you kind of see it the same way, Evan. I do see it the same way, but I only see it the same way as when Michigan's on offense and Georgia's on defense. But you reverse it. Georgia just doesn't want to win a national championship because they just will not put JT Daniels in. Mm. I don't no. think Stenson Bennett is capable of throwing the ball outside the hash marks. You saw a they lot of the throws. Because Alabama owns them. I understand that, but like they would have a better chance against Alabama or JT Daniels play because JT Daniels is NFL talent wise. Sense of Bennett, as soon as he graduates from Georgia, you'll never hear from him again. He like might most, be a sweet car salesman in Georgia. He's gonna be a great financial analyst, like somewhere in like a financial firm. Whoa, dude, watch it. Whoa, chop. That was a um, deep, deep chop right there. That felt you, bad. You didn't play SEC football, so I'm sorry. Did I not? I actually did in ninth grade. I played SEC football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, congrats, man. Um, like so, like if Georgia's on offense and Michigan's on defense, I think they match up decently to where like Georgia has a couple athletes, but it's nothing like to the extent of Alabama or like not even Georgia's athletes aren't even as good as Ohio State's athletes. You know what's gonna suck now that I just thought about it when you just said athletes. Is that George is going to get that receiver back that they've had out all year, and he's really good. What's he his played, name? He played Pickens. He played in the SEC championship game. Yeah. So he's going to be fu- he's going to be fully healthy, ready to rock against Michigan, and we're probably going to hear his name over and over. Take and away Michigan the first three. Take away Bowers. Bowers from Stenson Bennett. Yeah, he is really good. Um, take away Bowers, and then like force Stenson Bennett to find a second read. Yeah, I guess yeah, and that's the bigger point is going into this year. No, sorry, not going dumb. Come on, Grant, get it together. Uh, going into this week, for the majority of the season as well, we've all been like Georgia, Georgia, Georgia is the Georgia Invitational. Now that this is, now that we see they lost in a pretty convincing way, like it was like Alabama, pretty handily. Is it like does it open the door more for Michigan? Like, do you? I still the weird thing is I don't feel as I still feel the same like amount of dread playing Georgia as I did before watching Alabama beat them. 
if anything, if I was Michigan, I'd feel worse that now Alabama and Georgia are in the playoff. And likely you'd have to beat both of them. And I just hand up, don't see a way it's going to happen. But, you know, as a Michigan fan, I'm sure you guys can convince yourselves of some hope. But having Alabama and Georgia in the playoff and pretty much guaranteeing you're going to play both if you find a way to win the first one, don't love your chances. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'll be tough. I just, I mean, obviously you want Cincinnati, but Georgia, there is a, now there is a hope that like you can beat Georgia because Alabama has a blueprint. I just don't know if Michigan can replicate that blueprint blueprint because they're a run first team. Yeah, we're actually uh, working on cloning Bryce Young for the matchup. Just gonna the, the engineering department and Ann Arbor is gonna put their degree to use and try to get on that. Well, like in yeah. defense, Cade McNamara is a better Stenson Bennett. Like Cade McNamara compared to him is like the bigger, bigger, faster, stronger Spider Man when they both point at each other. I like I love this I love this little meme we got. But going Michigan on. does not have the skill players outside that uh, Georgia does. They don't have the six seven tight end. That's a true freshman just catching every single pass. But, but all they they just run the ball like that's what they use them for. And then okay, it's third down and long. Okay, we have to find Bowers because Sensor Bennett can't throw the ball outside the hash marks. Yeah, well, the kid was catching every single pass his way. So shout out that except guy. for the end zone, except for the one in the end zone. And feels bad. Honestly, after well, I mean, again, we still have weeks to discuss mm-hmm. this game, but I almost have this weird feeling already that we're going to see a lot of JJ McCarthy in this game because they're going to look at what Bryce Young did and like we need we need something like that on our team to like sprinkle into this game. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I dislike it. Whatever, but I do think that is in the cards. And I don't know how many more trick plays they have in their bag, but they're I'm assuming they're all going to be out in force against the Georgia team, like because you're going to have to get chunk plays to try to win this game. So. If it's Alabama somehow, is that's is a I think that's a worse matchup almost. Like I think I'd I'd rather face Georgia Way right worse. now than Alabama. Way worse. Just because Alabama's skill players and the way they spread you out. But Mechie's out. Back play. He told me Mechie, Mechie is out. Mechie right? did tear his ACL. He is out. That um, sucks for him. Their I feel bad. fourth receiver is better than your first receiver, so it's not going to matter. And also, you're giving Nick Saban multiple weeks to prepare for you, you guys would be so after. I mean, I've played in that game. Not me physically, but I watched my team play in that game. No chance. Game Nick Saban's off. only lost in the semifinal once, right? Yes. To Clemson. No. He lost in the championship to Clemson. They played they Clemson lost. in the semi. The fact yeah, that they beat Kelly Bryant Clemson team like thirty to nothing. <laughs> the fact that Alex just said I played in that game. Is still yeah, I don't know why that came out. through my head. Like, Alex did play in that. He kicked for the team. Yep, I saw it. I remember yeah. it. Uh, but back to that. Just Nick Saban um, is a pretty good coach. Yeah, I, uh, I don't so. know if you guys know that. So I would not want to play them first. I'd want to play them second. Him. <laughs> I love that spin zone. <laughs> Um, is Kirby Smart versus Jim Harbaugh going to be like the, one of the goofiest coaching head-to-head matchups of all time? Yes. Yeah, I think it's up there. Every time I saw Kirby on the sideline when they'd show him, he's just just like throwing his hands. I'm like, oh, guys, come on. Oh, dude, come on. Just every single time they showed him, he just looked like my guys are failing me. He well, was failing. His defensive mind. His and guys every were time failing they show him. him. It seemed like he was on, they were on offense. And like as a defensive coach, like how much input are you going to put like on the offensive scheme? It's definitely uh, he on the my Grant's power rankings of coaches that instill confidence in you when you watch him on the sideline. He's pretty low on it. It just doesn't feel good when you watch him on the sideline. Uh, also, it should be noted that Michigan snapped the vaunted streak that Alex warned everyone about of winning your first game in the Big Ten championship. So credit to Michigan. More but Penn State more, did it first. Penn State did do it first, uh, and we talked about it on beat up. I said, would that make this win even more impressive? Because you're you're really into this theory of you lose that the first time you go. And it turns out Wrong. he said it. He, Alex told me it does make it more impressive. So no, I Michigan. did not say that. You did. You said it make it more impressive because you're snapping this like voodoo. Anything magic. I said last in the last 24 hours cannot be held against me. <laughs> I don't think that's how alcohol works. That is how it works. Um. Okay, and then. If it's some, okay, Grant's dream scenario, if they're one and they play Cincinnati as four, is that 
I have a feeling that that even game is going to be tighter than I think because Cincinnati went out and handled their business against Houston. Do we think that's obviously Michigan's best chance to advance to the finals? But how would you guys see that matchup playing out? As you just your initial thoughts on like a Michigan just Cincinnati. A, that is one hundred percent the best matchup for Michigan because it's Cincinnati. Their puddle program. Um, <laughs> But they're undefeated the last two years. They're bro. definitely not a puddle program. I, I do think that uh, I don't know. I don't know if I would take Cincinnati, but I would definitely predict it to be close. They have enough, and their quarterback is good. Skill players are good, and their defense is pretty darn good. So I think they'd have a decent shot. But I would probably take Michigan close. I mean, I'd probably take Michigan close too, but I think it would have to be like a true like football game, like a 35-28, 28-21 game to where like you're sweating out every single second of it. And it's not like a Big Ten buffet or it's not a blowout. Just all clean, clean touchdowns too. I love those yes. scores. No field goals, just touchdowns. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be obviously their best chance to run the ball. Like I think uh, we've seen this Michigan team. If they can't run the ball, they're going to be in trouble. I think just with your big guys, the big nasties up front, that'd be your best chance against the Cincinnati front compared to like, I don't know how they're going to move Georgia. I, I don't understand how that's going to happen, but that's why I'm not a coach. And they're not. That's why I'm also not an AD because I would have made bad decisions with this coaching staff years ago. So, <laughs> so shout out everyone's still in place. I honestly hand up said it like at the, like towards the end of the game. I was just like, dang it. Why can't they just fire Jim last year? And be like, they're going to rebuild year this year. That'll be like in the off season recap is just like, I, I deserve to give some praise to Ward Manuel for like actually just sticking to his guns and be like, I'm blocking out all the noise. I'm going to be patient and I hope this works out because he looks ge- like a genius now, but a couple of years ago, it didn't look so hot. Um, I wanted to make one note about how sweet Kenny Pickett's fake slide was. I know this is a Michigan show, but it's good Kenny stuff. Pickett's- Did you watch when it came back from halftime? Yes. What was the score of that game? What did it end up at? 42 to 24. Who won? A pit destroyed them. So, Pitt, Michigan State. Little preview. Peach Bowl. Peach Bowl, Pitt, Michigan State. Is that yeah. what you think? Um, gun to my head, I'm saying it's Michigan State, Oklahoma State in the Fiesta. Yeah, because Baylor. But yeah, Evan, you were saying when they, came, they showed it in slow mo, right? When they came back from halftime? He came back from halftime and they brought in like that rules expert and he was saying how this is like a basically he said it's like a disgrace to football and then like I thought it wasn't play, allowed to fake a slide. He this guy is basically saying that he should never be allowed to <laughs> fake a slide ever again and this play needs to get like terminated from college football. There was more because it's not fair. There was multiple people, I'm not gonna name it their is names kind of in beat ups unfair. that were saying you shouldn't be allowed to do that. There was multiple <laughs> people said that saying I just our, think at our like, table that said you should not be allowed to fake slide and I you, said dude you can't hit it. anyone so if someone's giving their body up you think they are you're not allowed to hit them because you'll get a 15 yard penalty so you Correct. don't go for the hit and no, then you, he doesn't slide and then he scores you it's go for the hit sucks. and you just don't drop your head because when you're going to get flagged like you're going to be going full speed in a quarterback slide so you kind of just like bump into him no flag everything's fine you try to let up the place when they get the flag is when the quarterback is sliding and you just drop your head and try to decapitate the quarterback. Yeah, the like, thing is... Here's an idea. Just going for like a normal tackle and he slides, he slides. The thing too is, is like you could... It's going to be... It'd be impossible to enforce because you could just argue that it was like a uncoordinated hesitation or like back juke move. It looks like a hesitation. It looks like he's stop and go, but it's like... Without, it's a QB. Stumbling. Yeah, it's like, a QB, so it's like... It seems like a slide. It was unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it and it was like... That dude is super sneaky athletic compared to what I thought. And it's innovative. And I don't want to ban it until it happens against my team. Then I'll be like, ban that disgusting act. <laughs> it's it's think, one of the best plays of the year. Oh, 100%. I thought, it, obviously, the Heisman race was still in contention. If Bryce Young didn't do what he did, I'd be yeah. like, that's the Heisman moment right there. That fake slide, baby. Give it to Kenny Pickett. I don't care. Um, We don't really have any playoffs, more playoff stuff because we, we pretty much know who the final four is going to be. We'll get to the bowl stuff when we get those things. Well, did we find out on the bowls today as well or no? Uh, yes, later in the night. Oh, sweet. So next show we'll have a full breakdown <laughs> of our thoughts on bowl season, and uh, we'll know Michigan State's opponent. One and, other Michigan State uh, tidbit. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of the transfer portal, um, talk is coming. Okay. You're going to see a bunch of commitments. I'd, I'd say two, probably within 24 hours. Wow. Blog boys are hot on a Sunday morning. Is one morning. of them from the kid from Florida? 
one is the Florida kid and the other is the UNLV kid. Did you see this Florida kid's like Twitter? I stalked him yesterday when I found no. out he was visiting. This dude loves the Chucky doll and just like carries it around with him. Mm. Well, I'm out on him. No, so. no, I'm all in. I think the UNLV kid is better than that kid. Okay. Watch his tape. It's the Chucky, nice. Chucky doll. Congrats, a little you're playing bottom feeders in the out west. Like I'm telling you, he would be a nice addition. Um, I want to open the floor for like a five minute little discussion here. If you guys have any early season college basketball thoughts, I know it's hard to focus on sometimes when football is still going on, but you guys, Michigan State is started off hot and I wanted to shut down the rumors that this was a biased podcast run by Grant and I want to open <coughs> the floor for everyone. Alex was like, why aren't you tweeting about Michigan State versus Toledo yesterday? I said, you know what? Let's talk about it on the show. There's no need to wait. Are you serious? Did you really ask that? I mean, I was joking, but I did oh, say that bro. as a joke because Grant said – Grant tweeted about Michigan and San Diego State and then told I, I me – he's like, he's like I'll, I'll tweet about Toledo for you later. I was like, all right. And then he didn't. And I was like, hey, Grant, you didn't you didn't tweet about <laughs> Michigan State and Toledo. So it's, I, it's honestly all on Grant for even bringing that up. Well, that is a good tease into the state of the programs. Like Michigan beating San Diego State is a massive win at this point in the season based on how they've played so far. And I knew that tweet would resonate with, with thousands of our followers. So it's true. But So I guess I'll get the, the worst team out of the way so far through the season. Michigan basketball is kind of like, mm, what's the word? Unorganized? Like just kind of like, what do we got here? Obviously, everyone knows there's a lot of talent on the team, but they're definitely uh, the whole meshing, the whole chemistry is still happening. I haven't been a thousand percent dialed into every every game. Like I've watched a large chunk of it. I have my own thoughts on the X's and O's, but that's for a different show. The only thing I'd like to leave people with is give this team time if you're a fan of it. Don't rule them out yet. And um, Frank, this is a Frankie Collins pro podcast. I'm a big Frankie Collins guy, and I like the offense at Michigan with him running the point guard. Uh, if you guys have any thoughts on what you've seen from Michigan so far, I'd open up to you guys. Uh, they just look uninterested disinterested is that the word sometimes on defense they just look like they don't care and then offensively they're just not making shots i and that is probably going to change it's not just going to go all season where they just can't shoot and they shot much better against san diego state so i think michigan will be fine but there's a team in the state of michigan that's better Mm. intrigue um i would say I think the big problem is like offensively, like defense, it comes if like you play better offensively. Um, just like shooting, like Alex touched on, obviously, like I think they struggle from outside shooting. And then like with that, you don't have really an identity on offense right now. Like, do we go in and out through Dickinson or do we not? And then have like Dickinson as a role player. I think they're battling like an identity issue offensively. And it's just struggles. Yes. Dickinson should have more than like 11 shot attempts. But also, is Dickinson as good as people think? Like, can he generate the offense enough for Michigan to, like, fully function for an entire game? I don't know if he can. He's definitely reliant on the spacing around him. That's been 100% clear. Like, if, it, if and that's kind of true for most big men, unless you're Shaquille O'Neal. Like, yeah. you need you need people around you that can shoot the ball so they can't just, like, triple team you in the paint. I mean, in defense of, like, Michigan, like, it's okay to lose games in college basketball. And plus, I don't think there's really that much of a dominant team this year. Um, as you can see, everybody's lost, and you can see like some weaknesses here and there for, per team. So, yeah, the only true panic on this team, obviously, the expectations were super high. So, but until Big Ten plays starts, you can't shift the expectations. Yeah, it's just like people are freaking out. Like, is this team even going to make the tournament? Uh, I still think they will, and oh I think gosh. that would only be like the the nightmare scenario if that happened. But uh, they should be fine. They have enough talent. Now to Michigan State, who had a nice little non conference schedule so far with their results. Only really had one hiccup game against a really good team, so I wouldn't even call it a hiccup. It's just like Baylor's sweet. Um, what have you guys seen from your Michigan State Spartans? Is this the A.J. Hogard Big Ten Player of the Year campaign? Uh, he doesn't start. Um, and, and I'm a big A.J. guy, but, like, no. The biggest um, A.J. guy outside of his parents. Probably the yeah. only A.J. guy. Um, however, he owes, us, he owes us a dunk. Don't forget it. He dunked. He owes us a dunk. Why does he owe us a dunk? He tweeted that, just so you know. If you were a big H.O. Hogar fan, you would have saw that yesterday. Uh, 
I fraud. Don't know how big of a fan I am, but for fraud. Uh, Michigan State's point guard play is much better. Defensively, they're playing well. Bingham down low on defense is really, uh, really a big factor. You know, he blocks a lot of shots. And um, my favorite part about this basketball team, favorite player, is Jay Nakins because his bunnies are just incredible, and he's so athletic. And I just want to see more of him. And I know that if he played more, he'd probably mess up a lot more. But I'm totally cool with him just playing a lot and messing up. Because he's better than most uh, most players on our team, probably. I don't think he turned the ball over much more than Hogard. No, uh, we're better than I was expecting so far. Um, defense, obviously, I think was are always decent, just based off of like offensively, talent wise. You're gonna have to make it up somewhere, and I think it's on the defensive side. Um, but obviously, I'm always the guy that I'm expecting more. It's just like scoring the ebbs and flows of it, but it's college basketball, so it always happens per team. Um, but I'm pleasantly surprised with the team so far. Um, I have no really complaints, turnovers, obviously, but I mean, it's a Tom is a led team, and we're always going to turn the ball over, so I don't think why people are shocked by that. And so going into Big Ten season, I forget what everyone's expect- expectations were to start the year. Is this like a... I just remember like, I've been thinking, like, okay, does Michigan State crack the top four? Because Big Ten was supposed to be so good. I think it's pretty clear now that they're going to be – I mean, they have a – as we go into Big Ten, the favorite to win is all Purdue, but I, Michigan State's right right there, like, in the two two spot probably or two or three. And I think expectations change now where now you can, can try to compete for a Big Ten title, regular season and tournament, where I think what's going into the year is like, are we finishing the top five of the Big Ten and you'll be fine. Now, it's obviously, Purdue's really good, but Iowa hung around, and it's college basketball. You never know what's going to happen. Um, we don't have to go to Mackey this year, so advantage us. Mm, that's huge. So, I mean, I think the Big Ten's kind of wide open. Purdue's obviously the front runner right now, but like two through five, I think it's just a, anybody could get that spot. Yeah, like any sane person would just be like, Okay, guys, pencil and Purdue, but as Big Ten sweats, you just kind of like until I see a Matt Painter team like do it. I know they have they've they've been good in the past. I think they've either won. I don't know if they won it outright. They definitely shared, but like there was a picture from their gym. They haven't made a Final Four since 1980. It's like it's just hard to trust that program. Yes, if actually like running the table of the Big Ten. So until I see it happen, I would I would bank on like a Michigan doing it or a, a Michigan Michigan State team doing it or even like Illinois. Like even Illinois was like just a scarier team last year than. I think about Purdue, but I guess we'll see. Um, Alex has also stepped away for another moment, if you can't tell, <laughs> by his alarming absence. We'll get to the last topic here and wrap it up. The Tigers made their big splash. We'll go into all the Tigers signings later uh, in the later episode, you know, but it was important to talk about Javier Baez because everyone's like, we need a shortstop. We need a shortstop. We need a shortstop. Um, this was a big Carlos Correa podcast from what I felt like. It was not Carlos Correa who we got. Um, I'm going to toss it to Alex first, joining us now. Your thoughts on Javier Baez? Um, despite what a lot of people were saying, a lot of negativity from the fan base in the group chats, um, I'm cool with Javi Baez. Great defender. Um, you know, he's going to help the team. I think people forget. Do you want uh, Zach Short still playing shortstop? No. I mean, this is a huge upgrade. Despite, like, you missed out on Correa. It sounds like he didn't want to come here. So you just have to neutral think. We still got a good <laughs> all-star caliber player. And uh, that's good. That's a good thing. Correa hasn't signed yet anywhere, has he? No. no. He wasn't going to sign until after the lockout, I don't think. Oh, that's right. There's a lockout. Uh, also, I know everyone thinks that uh, I went and just threw up there. But turns out I didn't. No I one didn't say anything about that. Nope, I didn't say one word about it. You said Just my alarming it. absence. I heard you. I have my headphones yeah. in. No, I know. Yeah, there's. You hadn't talked in a while, so I just wanted to let people know. Like Alex isn't just sitting there mute, like texting. He's he stepped out. But now you just outed yourself. Uh, I didn't know. I actually did not. I was saying goodbye to our uh, our guests. Oh, they're they're heading out. Uh, well, one of Ed, them left. Evan, your thoughts on. Javi Baez. Uh, gut reaction, I was the negative fan that we missed out on Korea. I'm like, why can't we just spend money and get the guy that we I want? think we tried. Well, well, we didn't try hard enough, clearly. Um, 
And then, like, you look at it from, like, an actual standpoint. Like, we did upgrade the position, like Alex said. We got better defensively, probably offensively as well. Um, and, like, we were talking in the group chat, like, okay, you take away the month of April and this team's, like, a playoff team. And adding, like, Javi Bias to the team, like, he cannot hurt the team. It's just a matter of if he can hit for average. If he hits for average, strikes out less, then I think he adds more wins to the team. It's just like we got like the second option, so everybody's going to be down on it. I still think it's a quality player overall. Yeah, I agree. I have this – my weird gut reaction in kind of like dumb analysis is I feel like Javi Baez – and the biggest thing with him is his strikeouts. Everyone hates – like he's a, they call it in the nerdy community a two outcome guy. He's either like a power hitter, so like a double or a home run or a strikeout. I have this weird feeling that he's going to really struggle playing in Detroit in the beginning months when it's freezing and just like miserable and you don't want to be there. So I'm going to reserve judgment no matter how bad, if those months look bad. I'm going to reserve judgment to the summer months when he could heat up. But the only thing that concerns me with him is how like it got toxic in New York with their whole team and the fan base. I don't know if he was a leader of that or he just kind of fed into it with the, with the boot, the thumbs down stuff. Like I just vividly remember, I forget his name, Evan, you'll probably remember, or I also have an elephant memory that one player on the tires that everyone hated. And he would like, he got like audibly caught, like cussing at the fans on like Fox sports Detroit. Like he was like, F you guys, you like flip the bird. Someone, one of our oh, players, the guy that the outfielder that flipped off the fans because he yes. missed a fly ball on the outfield. I saw a picture of it. His yeah. name was, I'll no idea on this one. Oh, what was his name? Who flipped? Was off. he uh, white? He was white. Yep. Oh, Tyler Collins. Tyler Collins flipped off oh. the crowd. Oh, yeah. I was never going to get that. That name. guy stunk. Yeah, he did. It's like Detroit fans are great fans. They're really passionate fans. They're not as like mean as Philly, but like they're going to get on a player if the players kind of have a poopy personality. So that's what I worry about. But. When I listen to AJ Hinch talk about Javi Baez, I'd run through a brick wall for AJ Hinch. And AJ Hinch is like, we need that competitive character in our locker room. And it's almost like a Javi Baez is not one of those like troubled players like the, the New England Patriots bring in. But I'm going to make that analogy where like you bring Javi Baez for a guy like AJ Hinch in this organization that's in the right direction. And I think like he just buys in. Like he w- he might think it as a challenge where like he was with the Cubs, obviously, when they were building their uh successful run and it's like okay now i went to new york the mets which is one of the most dumpster fire organizations in sports which is crazy because they're new york but now you come to detroit and you're kind of got that cubs mojo where we're going to try to like break a streak and a drought and we got this young lineup and i just think about the infield of um candelario you have Baez, you have probably scope at second base now and you have torkelson coming up green coming up you still got Badu and you got our pitching staff, and then you got the new catcher who I like, Barnhart. I like this Tigers team. I feel good about it. In a world where the Lions are the worst in the league and the Pistons are the worst in the league, we have the Red Wings doing well. We'll talk about them um, in a future episode as well. It feels like the Tigers are going to give us something to watch from baseball season, so I'm excited for that. And yeah, like you said, you know, I echo the same points. It's like disappointment. It's not Correa, but it's like, all right, well, we were so bad at shortstop that any signing is really an improvement, and I like that. But... Like we said, they definitely could have bought Correa because like Little Caesars is a behemoth and a Goliath, and they got money. <laughs> Shout out to our friend on the podcast. You Correa know, didn't uh, want to be money, here. Mint money. I think I would have paid $10 for a hot and ready if that means we have Correa on the team. Just jack up the prices. You know what? $8, I'll still take it. Yep, 100%. Uh, and I love Alex just dropping in like the rumor Correa didn't want to be here. I love that. He looks he looks down bad. And he, like, <laughs> I am close. fucking battling. Bleep. Sorry, but like, dude, this, this is not good. I, off, dude. Come on. I was told this show was going to be 30 minutes, and we are at an hour and 14 seconds right now. Yeah. Well, good thing is we're wrapping up right now. So we yeah. just talk too much. No, we I think too much. This, is, this is our shortest one by far. I haven't we talked got, in 20 minutes. <laughs> we got in and out. Um, so, with that, that is the end of our show. Plug our social accounts I have written down. Shot of MS on everything. Um, let's see if that. Uh, loop- can we pause for a second? Um, a guy who wants the podcast to be done faster. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry, but like McCray, sorry, um, Mikey two four seven eight name <laughs> drop. <laughs> sorry, dude, uh, Mikey, he is just blowing up our Instagram account. Um, and this is, I just want to hear your guys' thoughts. He said he gave three ranking scenarios. He said Michigan, Bama, Georgia, Cincy, or 
Bama, Michigan, Cincy, Georgia. He thinks Georgia could potentially fall to four. Guys, then, then he dropped his predictions and said Bama versus Cincy, 38 nothing. Michigan versus Georgia, Michigan 33-31. Michigan versus Bama, 35-28. Why not us? Fuck it. Hutch finishes fourth in New York. So I'm just going to give him his press because he he's – He's jacked up about this, so I just want him if to, If you like, think there's going to be 60 points scored in the Michigan-Georgia game, you need to get off your rocker. He's still I, I want to know he's what you're snorting. I want to know what you're snorting. I want to know what you're eating. I want to know what you're drinking. Because there's no way there's going to be 60 points scored in that game. <laughs> this is I unbelievable. Mean, he, he just said that Michigan would score a combined 68 points against Alabama and Georgia. And one of those, those games. <laughs> He's making an emotional high. He's had a good two weeks here. You know, we should probably let him have it. Oh, but breaking news. He says Hutchinson finishes second in the Heisman. Get out of walks here. Away with it. Mm, oh, no, still typing. Sec. Can't Willie wait to Anderson see his next had better stats than him. Willie Anderson had better stats than him. Kenny Wilkins had better stats Willie, than him. though. Yeah. Wilkins actually didn't. That's not true. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a spin zone narrative. Hutchinson's not even the best defensive player on his team. He... He well, then just said he is a Michigan slappy dappy. <laughs> Hutchinson's overrated. Uh, I agree. After we scouting him last night, <laughs> um, the only thing I was going to say is that in the Mikey shuffle, I didn't even picture the idea that Georgia could go to four. I don't think it's likely, but that would be something. That would really change. He claims the committee doesn't care about rematches. That would make me think that Michigan would put. That would yes, make Michigan do. one. Because the rematch narrative, they'd make Michigan one and Georgia four if that happens. But I don't like think he's Georgia's... shit housed on a Sunday morning at eleven. He's saying <laughs> he some put, egregious shit. He put Kahlua in yeah, his coffee. He's, a lot. he's been up since six thirty, so yeah, he's already had half his day. Yeah, well, we need to, shout we need out to the engagement. <laughs> we need to clock out of here before Alex says anything more regrettable. I need to go back to bed. But speaking of fans like Mike Healis, where I was going to say our social counts of let's see if the blue wall is out in full force again this week in the weeks to come with, with the likes. I'll see if I can find a nice little tunnel shot again of this week. See if it just run, it, run, <laughs> run the play back. Um, but shot of MS everywhere. You'll see uh, clips. Gr- oh, timer going off. You'll see clocks, graphics, um, quotes. We'll, so we'll see everything. And then how to listen to Apple Pods, Spotify, YouTube. Um rate and review this on all platforms you know the fouls the the five stars all that good stuff share the link with a friend and then lastly um submit any questions that you would like answered and we will do our best to answer them and leave them we'll read them live on the show as you saw with mikey um with all that being said we'll close this out with a cheers to the end of episode 49 and to a shift to college basketball season for the interim and more college playoff talk later Cheers to the Red Wings winning five in a row. Cheers to the Wings falling up short, coming up short. (laughs) 